Welcome to another episode of Wellness Curated. This is your host, Anshu Bahanda. And as you know, the aim of this podcast is to help you lead a healthier, happier, more hopeful life. But we're not just here to give you ideas, but also to spark a journey, a journey towards a more fulfilling life. And this season, we're going to dial into the rhythm of the planet with a special emphasis on environmental well-being. Today, our subject is green investing. And green investing is where you're going to marry your financial aspirations with your commitment to the environment and to social progress. We are thrilled to have Senabu Bar on board. She's, a vis- she's the visionary behind ESG Africa. Currently, she's the group ESG director of Azura Power Holdings. She has 24 years of experience in the world of sustainability and the world of green investing. And she also has worked in the past with IFC in sub-Saharan Africa as their ESG manager. Welcome to the chat, Senabu, and thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Thank you very much, Anshu. And uh, I'm very thrilled to be on your show. So thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. And we're thrilled to have you here today. So Senabu, as you probably are aware more than anyone else, that at the moment, green investing is very topical and it's very fashionable. But will you explain to us what is the difference between green investing and traditional investing? And Shu, so thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, really, I, I just want to maybe step back and tell you a little bit more about what I do so that uh, the audience understands what I do and then link it to green investment. First of all, I'm very lucky to be one of those that are doing working on something that they're very passionate about. I am absolutely passionate about this field. So what I do is really supporting the uh, private sector in, um, in designing their sustainability journey. What does that mean? That means risk management in everything that's environment, uh, environmental related, social impact, as well as governance. So I'm going to just uh, briefly talk about each one of them. Environmental really means about looking at the impact a business can have on, on the environment, its surroundings. So whether it's pollution related or a spill, for instance, um, on, of a chemical on the, in the environment. Uh, and then managing those aspects to ensure that it doesn't happen. On the social side, imagine that if you are about to uh, start a business activity and you need land, for instance, and you have to acquire land. So how do you do that in a responsible way, which uh, ensures that the person you're buying or the business you're buying from land is, um, is not left worse off than they were before? And you look at also the impact that the business activity can have on the communities around it. On the governance side, you're looking at um, basically the company's um, decision-making process. How does a company make decision? You're really looking at the company's uh, decision-making process in terms of transparency, in terms of the ethical behavior, and in terms of also looking at the best interests of not only their shareholders, who have invested for profit to get an up to obtain some profit, of course, but also the stakeholders. And by stakeholders, I mean the um, the the employees. It could be the government. It could be any and any and any type of stakeholders that you might think of. So this is what you probably heard of being ESG. So you probably heard that term ESG, responsible investing, and everything else. So to come back to your question now, which is really the difference between the green investing and uh, traditional investing is really investing, I would say, number one, in companies that are responsible. So that look at aspects and are committed to environmental, social and governance, to ESG. And second of all, companies that are also um, very conscious in what they're doing in terms of the business activity. So they're investing in technologies that are using, using less fossil fuel, and that are safeguarding our water, whether it's less impact on climate change, so in air emissions, or just using any of our natural resources, such as fossil fuels. An example of that could be 
uh, companies that are involved in um, uh, wind technology. So in terms of, you know, generating electricity using uh, solar, using um, uh, wind, wind power, using hydropower. But again, each one of them also comes with some with some consequences that we can talk about that later as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. So for someone who's keen to get involved with the green investment movement, what would you say are the things that they should look for? What would you say are the guiding stars, so to say? Okay, there are many. But the first, first of all, what I would say is to really, and I think I mentioned that already, the commitment of the company, and not only in terms of what they say on their website, of course, because everybody can be self-promoting, but really what they're doing. Uh, making sure that you believe in the sustainability of the activity, uh, what transition plans that they have, how are they looking at climate change, how are they looking at social impact, how are they treating their employees in terms of being wary of the health and safety of their employees. So there's a lot of different indicators that will tell you about the, the, the company's commitment. So really looking at those strong commitments towards uh, environmental, social governance, and how they perform against those indicators, looking at their commitments to sustainable the, the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and again, how they're performing against those, looking at their um, commitment to climate change, the Paris Agreement in reducing um, so the impacts of climate change, again, how are they performing against that? So it's not only about the commitment, but really taking time to research what they're doing, um, so that's what that would be for me, the guiding principle, looking at that first of all. It requires a lot of research and not only superficial research. Um, and also just going to professionals. There are professionals that are out there looking at green investment, looking at uh, 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 looking at um, impact investment. That was what I was looking for, the impact investment, uh, responsible investment. So, you know, Senebu, I was in... Um... Denmark and Sweden recently and these countries are supposed to be leading the world in the in the areas of green investing that's what they say um what i realized was it's a whole ecosystem it's a whole lifestyle it comes down to every single individual it comes down to political will and social agreement that you know it's not just something that the companies do or the government does. It's a whole ecosystem. Don't you think so? You're so right, Anshu. Actually, it's just a, um, a, a way of living. It's a way of being. Yes, you know? it's a way of being, um, and, absolutely. Uh, and if you are really true to yourself, it will, um, it will automatically and uh, invariably just show in every aspect of one's life from uh, your choices, even at the grocery store, uh, from what to choose to eat in terms of clean living. You know, it shows in so many different ways, right? Uh, what you choose to eat, uh, how, when you go to the grocery shopping, do you make sure that you, you, you take a, a bag that's a recyclable bag, whether it's, a fa it's made of fabric or natural things that are recyclable, natural um, materials that are recyclable um, instead of using plastic? Uh, whether you, uh, the kind of cars you use, whether you, and, and again, you know, there's budget restriction, of course, but even just thinking about going green on different aspects of your life, uh, from your home, making sure when you're using water, when you're taking a shower, that you, you don't let the tab running all the time and you're conscious of it, of switching lights, of not letting the AC on. So there's so many things has already, each individual we can contribute and not just say, well, it's just me, so it doesn't make a difference if I don't do it, but saying I can make a change um, and starting in your own home and then requiring that from when you're investing of the companies you invest in. So if you're putting your money, whether you're investing in stocks, whether you're investing in a mutual fund, a pension fund, you know, asking the questions, well, where's my money going? You know, which companies are you going to be financing? What are those companies doing? And really following your own money. And so that's why I totally agree with you that it's really a way um, of being. So I also, there are a lot of pros to green investing, but there are also 
the likes of greenwashing. There's it's it's a there's a very complicated world out there when it comes to green investing. So talk us through some of the pros and cons of green investing. The pros are obvious in terms of if you really are looking for a sustainable future, and what does a sustainable future mean? The things that we're enjoying today, the luxuries that we have today of just being able to be out there, being able to enjoy what nature offers to us, whether it's through the food we eat, through the climate we have, through uh, the vista, the animals that we can see that even, you know, um, and being able to offer that to our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. So the few, you know, the, the future for them to have those same opportunities. And therefore, when you want to, when you're looking at green investment, to me is all the companies and all the activities that are helping us ensure that the future generation can benefit of all the things that nature have to offer today. So when you're investing in this company, you're really investing, you're, really, you're, you're making a statement, first of all, and you're contributing to all the things that we're fighting right now. We're fighting climate change. We're making sure, you know, we still have polar bears. We know they exist. We still have all these wonderful animals that are actually, and, and biodiversity, so not only animals, biodiversity, whether it be marine biodiversity, terrestrial biodiversity, that, that all of these things still exist in the future uh, and that we exist in the future, by the way. So our own survival. So for in terms of the benefit, not only you have that, that aspect, but also you can make money. So let's not think that green investing is hugging trees. You can make money in green investing. Now the cons, the cons on it for me is that um, on the financial return, for those who may be very interested in financial returns, maybe the returns might be more on the long term, even though there's been data out there that proves that companies with strong ESG performance actually outperform those with weak ESG performance. And we talked about ESG before. But nevertheless, the data on green investing, so the historical data, is not has um, has uh, has uh, the historical data is not as long as traditional investing because it's something that's that hasn't been there for for that long. So we have hundreds of years of you know uh, traditional investing uh, data, but not necessarily for green investing. Okay, but I mean here I want to ask you something which is again a big topic of conversation these days. So let's talk about say electric cars. So let's talk about investments in a healthier, in an electric car company, right? It's meant to be the more sustainable choice. But there is a, lot, a huge school of thought which says in making that car, the carbon footprint is greater than in making a traditional car. That's why green investing gets complicated. Can you throw some light on that? Yes, green investing is indeed complicated. Uh, and I think earlier also you might mention about greenwashing, um, so I do want to quickly maybe touch upon greenwashing and then we'll move to yes. the, uh, yes. the complication the example. So the I'd love you to, to explain greenwashing as well to our listeners. Exactly. Yes. So greenwashing, the, the most the simplest way I can I can put it is really the fake news in ESG commitment. So companies that actually uh, like to say a lot about what they do on the environment, on social, on governance, on green investing. But when you look deep down, they really spend more time talking about it than what they're doing on the ground. So it's really a way of dressing themselves up to look good because actually consumers and investors are looking for sustainable investment. They want to look at companies that are actually very conscious and committed to looking at the long-term sustainability of the company. You don't want a company that hasn't considered basic things, things that are going to make them sustainable, whether it's water resources, where am I, where's my water coming from? Uh, their community relationship in terms of ensuring that they, they, they have their license to operate, their social license to operate, um, that is involved in community development, really making sure that all the ducks are in the row, if I could say, in terms of ensuring their viability in the long term. So any investor... You would, any investor would want to look at all these aspects. So people that are pretending to do it but are not doing it, are, are, sorry, companies that are pretending to do it but are not doing it are the ones that we are calling greenwashing. So if we come back to the example of electric cars, 
So beyond what you just said, in terms of some of the reason, in terms of making the car, I think uh, looking at the electricity. So where is that electricity uh, that you, you know, you have to plug the, 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 the car? So where is that source of electricity coming from? So is it a electricity coming from solar panel, which is more green? So which source is it coming from is also equally important. If it's coming from fossil fuels, um, then you can argue that or that is maybe less green, even though you're using an electric car. But if where you're you're plugging it is coming from a source that is not green, then that could be an issue. So I think it's really looking at the whole the whole supply chain. It's not just saying, "Oh, I'm investing Absolutely. in an electric car," right? Or oh, this is wind power, so yes, great. Because even in looking at wind power, wind power also have a lot of effect on birds. So this is why I'm saying that it's very complicated. So you, it's really about looking at where is there less negative impact? Nothing comes with holy, it's not a holy grail. Uh, so, so it's really about, um, how would I say this? It's really about finding the equilibrium in terms of what is, what has less of a negative impact. So on that note, for people who are getting involved with investments, are there certifications or licenses that they should look for that you would trust? Mm. Yes, I mean, there are, there are some different certifications uh, that is always worth looking at. Um, and also the renewable, the, sorry, the, the renewal of those certification, I think is really important. So you can get it one time, but then how has the company done to maintain that certification? How long have they been certified? Um, and how many different bodies also are certifying them? I like to always say that it's really good to uh, triangulate information. So not just look at one source, but looking at different sources um, and looking at a company over time and not really get too hyped up about the marketing of that company. Uh, you can look at fair trade certifications. Uh, you can look at, uh, if you look at on the environmental health and safety performance, look at, you can look at ISO certifications also. And, and there's always pros and cons on any certification. You will find people that believe in it, believe in it and others that don't. Uh, so, but yes, there's some certification that you can look at and uh, um, approval, green seals of approval. But again, that does not, um, replace any research and I recommend really people to do their research and triangulate information as well. Lovely. And Senebu, you know, recently there's been all these fires in different parts of the world. And now the new term that people are using, for, it's moved from global warming to global boiling. So in this battle against climate change, we've briefly touched on it, but do you think green investing can really help us in that battle? Wow, this is a, it's a very good question, Anshu. Um, green investing is definitely, will definitely help in terms of the more we have a critical mass of company realizing that they can't get capital unless they are serious about ESG commitments, about protecting the environment, about looking at climate change, about social impact that's certainly going to contribute in our combat to climate change and our combat to having a, uh, a better world in here and leaving a better world to, to the next generation. However, it's not only about green investment, investing, it's also about our own individual, like we've mentioned, way of living, is about the sacrifices that we as uh, has people are willing to make. Um, it's about uh, the role of the government also in participating in this, in enforcing some of the environmental policies, laws, regulations that are in place uh, in terms of the, uh, the governments also um, uh, having some incentive, putting incentive out there for green investing as well. That, that to me is what's going to, going to help, but it's not only left to one actor, it's all of us together getting there and we each have a role to play in that. So what do you think governments can do and what do you think the big corporates can do and the big banks can do to help with green investing? What yes, more so can they do? 
yeah, what more can they do? So in terms of government, they, it's so easier, it's so much easier for government to make, uh, to, to, to contribute, I think, in that um, they can just ban certain things. Let's say something as simple as plastic. If it's not available in the supermarket, guess what? We're going to adapt. You know, <laughs> you take it away, we're resilient. We'll find another way of doing it. So I think there are really some short, um, low-hanging fruit that can make a difference uh, in terms of waste management, in terms of um, reusing, you know, using biogas, in terms of, uh, you know, waste to energy. So there's so many different things that the government can put, uh, sorry, so many incentives that the government can put in place to... Um, to, to encourage green investing, to encourage, encourage uh, a greener way of living. Uh, if, for instance, the government decided, you know what, and I think it's, it's been done in the UK and in other countries uh, in terms of cars, uh, how many cars can be on a road at the same time, you know, having even and, you know, odd plates, number plates, depending on the day, having a day maybe on Sunday, on Sundays, just to say, you know what, Sunday morning on this road, no cars, Everybody use their bike. I mean, there's so many different things that the government uh, could could put in place uh, to to encourage. Um, I mean, to, to contribute to the combat to climate change. That's what I would say. Um, and in terms of the private sector, now I do what I do because I actually believe that the private sector can have the biggest impact in our combat to climate change and having a sustainable future. Because what businesses do is it's it just, um, the scale of it is so big. So when a business decide to source in a sustainable manner, when a business decide to, to, to protect its employees um, in, in terms of their health, their safety, when a business decide to be responsible, the impacts are huge. Thank you for that. Um, where do you think green investment is headed? What do you think are going to be the interesting things that are, I mean, if you were given, if I gave you a crystal ball and said, Senabu, tell me, where are we going with this? What should people be looking at in terms of investments? What would you say? Well, in terms of where we're going, I think it's just going to be a must and a requirement. I mean, if you look at today already, you have, I'm going to talk about the Equator Principal Bank. What are Equator Principal Equator Principal Bank, uh, just bank who have made voluntary uh, commitment to uh, uh, from a from a certain threshold of investing to require that their client uh, have ESG standards. So are committed to ESG um, to, to having sorry to having a good ESG uh, to have good ESG policies uh, application of these policies. And, uh, and really show their commitment in what they do. So considering uh, ESG in everything that they do. Now, you have right now, I think about over 120 banks that are signatory to the equator principles, which means that if you do not have, if you don't look at ESG aspect, they will not invest in your, in your company, or at least if you're not committed towards it. So it's not like from the uh, front, you have to be high in, in ESG, but at least you have a roadmap to improving your ESG standard and meeting certain commitments, typically IFC, IFC uh, performance standard. And IFC performance standards are considered the gold standard in sustainability in terms of uh, private sector investment. So I think this is where it's going in terms of just more and more pressure, not only from the consumers, from banks, from government, uh, to to demo for companies to demonstrate responsible uh, investing, and I think people catching on more and more to the fact that green investing can yield to profits. So you can do good, um, you can do social entrepreneurship, you can do green investing, you can have you can do social, uh, you can do impact investing and make money. Um, so I think that's where where it's going. And I hope that there'll be more data to support it. And this will become actually just, just the only way of, of doing things. Thank you for that. Also, like you were saying earlier, earlier they used to say that 
if you chose a green company, you won't necessarily make money. But that's not the case anymore, right? As I've mentioned earlier, there are data supporting that companies with strong ESG performance outperform even uh, outperform companies with weak ESG performance. Okay, right? give me an example. So, um, well, I, I, it's hard for me to give you an example because um, I would need to mention some companies. But let, let's let's. Um, so this is this is data from Harvard Business School, and there's so this is you know. I would say credible data yes. that looked at companies over, you know, from the nineties all the way to, you know, for 10, 15 years, looking at um, those with strong ESG performance versus those with weak ESG performance and showing that on the stock market, that the stocks, the stock of those with strong ESG performance was actually outperforming those with weak ESG performance. And it makes sense. Think about it. If you're not looking at the sustainability of your business, you know, uh, if you're not managing your environmental uh, or social risk, you might not have your social license to operate. You might not have your environmental license. If you don't have good governance practices, that means the decision making, your transparency, ethical um, aspects could be compromised. So obviously, these type of companies can't be long lived. Sooner or later, uh, these bad practices are going to catch up. So if you're looking at the long term investing, companies that are incorporating in their strategy, in their business strategy, environmental, social, and governance are just better company because they're looking at risk management from all these different aspects. So for me, um, Anshu, I think I'm losing the plot a little bit. What was the question? I'm going to, sorry, we're going to have to go back. What was the question? I, make I sure was just I saying, give me an example of a company um, that has, been very good. Uh, that is a would you would consider a green investment company, which has also been very lucrative. Well, I think Tesla, Tesla is one that comes to mind. Um, that people, you know, uh, can think of. My son swears by Tesla, and I want to. I, I don't want to really say this just because. Um, because uh, interestingly, I mean, my son even he just turned eighteen, but even before he he was eighteen, and he was looking at me investing. Uh, my investment portfolio, and the first thing is asked asked me was why aren't you investing in Tesla? You know, this is this is green, this is the future, and it's it's um and it had a really strong impact on me to hear him say that because you realize that this young generation is so conscious of it. You know, yes, they're really yes. thinking about the future, and it also made me think how how this this young generation can impact. A lot even current companies because the existing companies think about it they all have they all the people who are behind the companies you know we talk about these companies like some entity but who are behind the companies they're just human beings just like you and i absolutely right absolutely their parents, yes. Yes. Their parents that have children who can also be influenced by their children you know their children might hold them accountable it, it it's the more the more i think this company think about um, the future. Think about their own children, the, the, the owners of these companies. Think about their own children uh, and maybe even influenced by their own children, their families around them. Um, I think the more commitment we're going to have around ESG um, and, 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 and the more creative and innovative people are going to be because Absolutely. green investing requires that innov innovation. So when you think that you can actually do things uh, using technology in a more efficient way, um, you can do it in using less energy, less water. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. More. Talk to me about technology. Talk to me about using technology and green investing because it's so important. It's, it's essential. Technology is, is, is essential. And I really believe in... Um, incorporating i mean in, in innovation if you look at it even in uh, on the um, energy production side even when using fossil fuel people are looking at carbon capture technology they're looking at uh, uh, green hydrogen i mean there's so many different uh, other other aspects so let's um let's watch this space that's what i would say let's watch this space fabulous fabulous no absolutely but in terms of asset allocation where do you think, 
But do you have a view that should they have 50% of their assets in green? Should they have 100% of their assets in green? Because when I talk to my 25-year-old daughter, she's like 100% should be green. And then I talk to um, some more traditional investors and they're like, we're doing 5%. We're dipping our toes in to see. So do you have a view on this? A more balanced view than both sides that I've uh, I mean, to. I can try my, my own personal view is that um, 100% of it should be on companies that are committed in ESG. I would not invest in any company that doesn't show true commitment into ESG because that is, for me, the way a company can be resilient and can survive all the different shocks and waves because they're thinking about this. They're thinking about how they're going to be viable in the future. They're thinking about how they're going to be sustainable. So I would not invest in any company that doesn't look into that, right? Now, in terms of the green investment, I think that your daughter is talking about in terms of, you know, the likes of the Teslas, the likes of the wind farm, the likes of the solar, the likes of uh, companies that are in business activities that are really focused in... Um, in, uh, in in reducing our use of uh, the limited natural resources that we have. That, I think, depends on different appetite, depends also on uh, individuals' goals in terms of investing. Uh, some, some of these green investing might require much more capital investment and also might um, be more long-term in really getting your returns. Others, you can get short term. So it really depends on what is your investment profile. But like in anything, I recommend highly that everybody, you know, have a diversified portfolio and also talk to an investment professional and looking at, you know, how much you want to do it in green investing, in, in uh, impact investing. Um, sorry. What is your own way of seeing this world and, and your own beliefs? Because in, in, in essence, at the end of ultimately, ultimately, you know, you are, you are, you know, where you invest. People say you are what you eat, and I believe you are also where you invest. It's a reflection of you, just like your friends are a re reflection of you. Your investment is a reflection of you. Your investments are a reflection of you. Very important. You know how when you're buying your tickets, there's always carbon credits at the end. So I got curious about that, and I started looking into that. But it's a very hard area. And carbon credits are still a very gray area. It's not as simple as it looks, and it's not that easy to get. And the people I spoke to who are actually selling carbon credits are not necessarily being able to cover their costs. It's a little bit more difficult area, to be honest, because uh, you're talking about offsetting. That's what you're really saying. It's like, well, yes, I am... Um, using carbon and, and you will actually see some some uh, airline companies i think i've seen this oh i wish i could just remember british airways it does it as an example british airways does it so the airlines will indicate the amount of carbon a certain flight has generated and really what you mean by having to offset it is really investing uh into a company that actually is doing some carbon sequestration or like a forest uh, uh, having more um, more trees planted as a simple example. You know, more trees planted um, in some, some land, in some forests um, to, so to, to, to protect the environment, let's say that. So, so some companies actually have programs in place to systematically do it. However, these offset and these carbon credits is still quite complicated and actually quite expensive. You've mentioned some companies saying that they're not making money, but even, even so, it's still very expensive for a company to offset. Because when you're looking at the amount generated, and the number of trees that require it to be, to be planted to offset it, it's it's just so huge. So exactly. yes, exactly. There, there are more and more companies involved in it, but there can't be enough. I would say that the more uh, that we need more and more 
Um, we need more and more companies doing it. Uh, planting trees. Uh, I'm, uh, just as an aside, I am. Uh, I also work with this organization uh, called Just Dig It, which is out there trying to cool the earth by planting more trees. Uh, so, um, but it's. Um, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I wish I could tell you a little bit more because myself, I'm researching that, looking at opportunities with uh, the private sector companies that I work with in terms of how to offset it. But when I look at that, it's, it's so huge that it doesn't make business sense. It doesn't make financial exactly. sense to do it. Exactly. Right. So, and I think we're still at that stage, even though I'm seeing more and more opportunities uh, blossoming, but um, it's still very expensive. So right now, the idea is to reduce it, reduce your carbon footprint as much as you can. And that's what I think the focus is on. And then when you can, do some offsets. Okay, lovely. And sort of casting the net wider, are there any sectors or industries which you would say are a goldmine for green investing, just as a tip for our listeners? I guess um, renewables. Renewables is the easiest one. Uh, but also there's a social, so the, the impact investing, because uh, we talk about green investing and sometimes when we talk about green investing, people only think about things that are to do with the environment. But there's there's also impact investing, which are impacts on, on social aspects, right? And this can be uh, on companies that are focusing on poverty reduction, companies that are focusing on having more access to uh, to healthcare, more access to uh, to finance, uh, financing more women, financing. So there, there's, there's so many different ways that one can contribute. Uh, for me, I, I look at them equally as important, right? Improving people's life, uh, improving the environment is all part of the well-being of this planet. That's actually very good advice because a lot of the well-known fund managers are now doing impact investment funds. So people can even... They will do all the research. People just need to decide which fund to invest in, which impact investment fund to invest in. So that's very good advice. But Senabu, at the end of every chat, we do a quick rapid fire round to summarize our chat. Just maybe one, one thing before we end. So before that, it would be, it would be really to, I think what, what's really important, maybe we didn't touch upon, is that as you look at investing into that, when you're in front of your investment professional, ask question. It's about you having the right questions. Ask, it's about you asking the right questions and, and, and explaining what are your investment goals and explaining your own, your own values and looking at companies that match that. Because the more we have consumers asking for that, the more companies also are going to respond to that as well. So do not underestimate the power you have uh, in, in terms of your investment choices. We are, we are bullying Mother Nature. It's actually yes. that. It's, yes. it's, it's bullying because we are, we're taking and... Uh, but let's also not be mistaken. Mother Nature is fighting back. And uh, the tsunamis that we're seeing, the... Um, the, the fires. You know, the, the fires is enough is the mother nature's way of saying enough you know yes. and it's fighting yes. back so we really need to go back and find our harmony in terms of how we were before with nature where we took what we needed we gave back we did not overuse uh we were much more conscious and i like to go back and looking at even when i think about the way i was raised and back in the day we had already this mindset of a circular economy. I remember when we had guests and we'd go buy whether it's drinks and they were in bottles and not in plastic. And, you know, we would eagerly wait for the guests to go because we would take back those bottles to the store and get the money from back from it because you had to have a consignment for the bottle. So it was this, you use it and then you return it because it's going to be reused. When we went to the, to the market, uh, we ha we had this material in terms of the bag is a calabash that's really made of naturally biodegradable product. We didn't use plastic bag. Now you go, I'm, 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 I'm from Senegal. I mean, the whole environment is plastic and cheap plastic that 
clothes. I mean, the trees are decorated with plastic, you know. So, uh, and you know about our oceans. Our oceans are filled with plastic. Um, and one of the things that I always say is that in the past and our ancestry were so in touch with nature and that even in many African language, including my own, you will see that the word tree, which is for me a symbol of environment, is the same as the word medicine. You know, oh, in Wolof, lovely. You, say, you say garap, garap means tree, but garap also means a medicine. So for me, it's, it's counterintuitive for us to, to destroy what heals us as human beings. So I'm going to do a rapid fire round with you um, to get lightning quick wisdom from you. So if one were to tread the green investment path, what's the one thing they shouldn't overlook? Um, ESG, look at the ESG commitment. I think that's, you start there. What is a company's commitment on environmental, social, and governance, and are they walking the talk? Lovely. In your eyes, what's the paramount environmental concern investments should zoom into? The use of natural resources, whether it's water, um, whether it's um, fossil fuels, and how efficiently they're doing it, and how, what's their use of technology to minimize the use of all these um, resources that we have, as well as their social, um, their social practices. How are they treating communities? Uh, how are they treating their, their own employees? So for me, those are the aspects that I would look at. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And what I'm going away from this podcast is that green and impact investing isn't just investment into profitability, it's investment into our survival. It is. It's, in, it's investment into our survival that also could be profitable. Thank you for listening today. I hope you learned something new. I hope you've learned all about green investing. And I hope you're going to press a like and encourage your friends and family to subscribe to my channel. I would love to hear from you. So please send an email to Anshu at wellnesscurated.life with any topic suggestions or questions that you might have. We also have a book of affirmations, which has some really interesting affirmations that I have written. These are things that I say to myself and a lot of people ask for them, so we've printed it out. Please send an email again to anshu at wellnesscurated.life if you would like a copy. And thank you for being here today. See you next week.